Welcome to the March 29th, 2022 episode of Reactive Consciousness, the in-depth podcast about what happened this week in our lives. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And we have another wonderful, beautiful, fantastic, all show. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Flawless. <laughs> Stuck the landing. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I had a... Uh... Uh, a broken ankle, but you know we still got there. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say in your jump you caught something on the way up, but you flipped and landed on your feet on the way down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we have we have some interesting stuff that happened this week. Uh, not a, like a ton of like like uh, like big gigantic things, but like just some like pretty interesting things. Uh, you, you brought this to um, my attention. There was a like a PS4 update. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do you realize what the update was? Because there was a couple things, but one particular feature stood out to me. No, but like I, I know you must have paid attention to it, or else you would have, uh, you wouldn't have brought it up. Yeah. So I mean, so sometimes the the updates are incredibly vague, like yeah, makes like things worse better, updates. and it's like oh, you're patching hacker stuff out or whatever. But in this case, they actually listed a few particular features, most of which I forgot. But the the feature <laughs> they mentioned at the bottom is what stood out to me. They they added Ukrainian language support. Oh wow! Get a load of that, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like just I, I just get a kick out of that. Like you know what we're doing it. <laughs> uh yeah, the the world is a really weird place at the moment. Um so um hopefully. All it took was a war for Sony to add Ukrainian language support. Uh, this, I mean, it, it is a cool move, though it really is. It, it, I, I it, it's, it's, it's odd. It, like you hardly ever see an entire, like the entire world, um, like support one side. Um, yeah, it, it, it's really an odd thing. Um, and it, it's, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into it, but uh, it, 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 I think it's going to have like big implications later on and and by the by the way I, I know that our list is in a different order but i i do want to jump to one thing just because it's yeah relevant to the subject sure which and plus this is weeks old anyway i, I just forgot to add this but the advance wars compilation for the switch i think it's just it's the two game boy advance games right yeah it, it's a remake of uh, one and two yeah okay so the gba ones yeah. uh yeah that, that has been delayed because of the war and this was announced like a day or two after the whole thing started do you know the reason for this yeah because it it basically tries to make fun like capturing territory um which... well it, <laughs> it, it 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 i mean kind of but like have you like i haven't actually played the games myself i looked this one up but have you tried the games um no i i i haven't played them directly uh, ever all right because i want to give you two pieces of information and both of them are about the same thing which is that the first game in the series is fucking cursed so the reason oh i know about the first one yeah okay yeah i, I knew about this okay go ahead okay so the contemporary reason it's cursed is because the first mission well, first of all I'll, I'll point out that there are no real countries in the game, but there are, yeah. like, it, Analogs. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like sports team names, like Orange Star, Blue Moon, but Blue Moon is very obviously an analog for Russia, and there are other, yeah, like you said, there are obvious analogs for other countries. But uh, yeah, Mich that kind of thing happens in, like, Valkyria Chronicles as well. I mean, they're... they're yeah, they're, it's they're called the European Nazis. War. It's a little on the nose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that that's very on point. But uh, the first mission of the first game is the country that is an analog to Russia trying to uh, attack a neighboring country. So it's, it's not just the fact that it's war, but that that's pretty on the nose. You don't want to release that ten minutes after 
actual Russia. It, Tra- it's kind of like when they um, well, disaster Iron, report four. Like yeah, we can't re- we can't release this release this game five minutes after an actual flood. It's just a bad taste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, so you said you already know about the first game. So can you tell me the other piece of information? <laughs> So the, the the first game like back on the Game Boy Advance yes. was released on <laughs> on nine eleven. Well, s- s- not nine nine ten. Yeah, but come on. <laughs> yeah, and it was all downhill from there. <laughs> like like actual nine ten. Like like the day before. Like yeah. So like 9/11. the game came out and there was no not drama the whatsoever. And then tomorrow nine eleven happens. Like ah oh, fuck. So like as cool as Advance Wars is, man, that that first game. It's got a, it's got a just a an air of actual political implication or not implications, political like I don't know connections. And, and I I can't believe like I think a lot of people also want distraction from this stuff because it's scary. Um, that is true. Yeah, I don't really want to play the game where literally mission one is like, oh boy, I get to fight Russia as it tries to attack its neighboring country. Like, oh come the fuck on. Yeah, especially in in America and Europe, where like we're you know this is a scary situation. Yeah. And, um, um, so like I I doubt anybody wants to like simulate this. <laughs> like. Yeah, not in the uh, mood. The Even though I actually really want to play the games, but like not 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 not, not good not timing. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. Um, it, it's it's like I understand you know like the the fun of uh you know like a strategy game like i'm not like i'm not saying you shouldn't you know ever play a strategy game because it implies war but like this is just uh the it's just yeah it's uh, it's a little too on the nose yeah exactly exactly um and so um coincidentally uh the switch got a a, a pretty uh like major feature added to it that's it's it's always needed <laughs> uh, well I, I was just gonna say people have been asking for this since i, I don't know about necessarily day one but very clear like obviously year one yeah like and how do you not have this basic ass feature <laughs> five or six um yeah uh so yeah uh they they added groups uh to uh to the menu yeah basically you... folders although yeah. from what i read aren't they like not on the home page it's like oh, somehow wow. still less convenient than like the 3ds <laughs> that like sounds layout right. i mean um it that's just the way nintendo does that yeah but I this mean, but this isn't even like actively not paying attention to your competitors this is like you yourselves have already done it better <laughs> yeah I, nintendo um for whatever reason uh doesn't seem to acknowledge the people that buy a lot of their stuff <laughs> because this is a, a feature that like helps them um no, I, I I will say to to be fair to Nintendo, well, well I don't know I'm gonna be simultaneously fair and unfair. I was gonna say to be fair to Nintendo, I don't know what Japan does, but America loves tweeting at companies, but Nintendo of Japan and like other Japanese companies, like the Japanese branches of those companies, are not reading that shit. Yeah. But at the, but at the same time, I'm sure Japanese people were like, where are the folders? <laughs> yeah, I. It's one of those things where, like, Nintendo's, like, in its own little bubble and, like, just kind of, they they always kind of, like, do things in waves instead of just, like, you know, at once when they should. Yeah. Um, like, I've always said, why don't they just release, like, the Nintendo online stuff, like, all at once? Because, like, you always get into this cycle where you start with Super Mario Brothers and then, like, end with, you know, like, Kirby's Adventure um like because that's a you know a later release um like every single time that they decide to release their old games you know they they start with their oldest games and then they 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 give you their newest games uh, like at the end or you know like the difficult ones to release at the end well yeah um, i mean i well i do appre- i mean like well i was going to say appreciate that's not true i i understand them going piecemeal piecemeal because it continuously puts the eShop in the news and keeps it relevant. I guess, yeah. I, I get that, but, yeah, if you do it the same annoying, way every though. time, it's like, still waiting for Kirby's Adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, um, like, don't you realize, like, the stuff at the end is is going to be, like, like, not that, like, like Super Mario Brothers is an exception because it's an all-time classic, but, like, um, like you know, something like Urban Champion, they, they always start with Urban Champion, you know, because, like, it, it it's one of their black box games. But well, but that's one Urban of those Champion. things, though, like, do you, do you think every time they were, like, do they look at the numbers, like, do, 
like, I don't think they care. Because, <laughs> like, they keep releasing Urban Champion, but, like, no, like, there, there can't be anybody buying that, can there? Who's buying Urban Champion? It, it must be more beloved in Japan. It must be. Because, um, yeah, it's like, oh, man, we're doing it again. Like, how many sales could there possibly be? <laughs> well, um, you, you gotta think, um... When the Famicom came out, it was a much different situation than when the NES came out. Yeah, that's um, certainly true. When, when, when the Famicom came out, uh, there was no Super Mario Brothers. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. So um, there wasn't exactly the quality. Um, like, like everybody owned everything for the uh, Famicom Like when that came out. So like they owned like all of the crappy games that came out, too. So they kind of have like a... a um, like, because everybody had them, they have, like, a nostalgia for them, even though they were crappy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, so that, that includes, like, games like Icky and Atlantis No Nazo and, like, um, uh, what, what's another one from that era? Um, well, well just, I was just I was just going to say, like, Americans have that, too. It's just, like, whatever your parents bought you, whether it was good or not, it's just in your head forever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's, like, a, what, this a Balderdash, um, you know, like, like games that... Um, you know, uh, that, that, that game where you're, you, you, fall like half a pixel and you're dead. Uh, what, what, what is that? Uh, <laughs> I yeah, yeah, I think like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, they, it's not even a good or bad thing. It's just like, I, I remember this. So yep, like, yep. yeah, exactly. Well, it's yeah. like how everybody had Ninja Turtles and everybody remembers that, that coral level. Yeah. Never yeah, could exactly. beat that coral level. <laughs> exactly. No matter like, you know how much bullshit it was, you know, it, it, it's, that's just the way it is. So, uh, I think urban champions just kind of like that affectionate thing. I mean, if, uh, it's one of the very first, uh, like one-on-one fighters. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. there, there, there really isn't much before that other than, uh, what, uh, um, was karate champ before that? Uh, karate champ has to be, uh, karate champs like the, the beginning of it. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> it, there, it, there's like, there's possibly rotoscoped uh karateka <laughs> yeah but karateka wasn't like two player um, yeah and it also like, wasn't uh originally a nintendo game yeah 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 uh, so but yeah like eh. but i don't know that, that, that's going into a larger discussion but like, yeah yeah, yeah. N- N- nintendo kind of just they do the bare uh, for for better or worse they do the bare minimum to get things out but it's always high quality like when they release something it's never buggy um like you you can you can at least admit that so their stuff works um and it's generally charming so um there is that so you know they they're like okay well maybe we'll throw them a bone and give them folders now even though uh like everybody has a, over 100 games now yeah yeah go ahead and organize that <laughs> <laughs> well moving on from that uh there was a video game release that did catch my or a video game like um yeah, announcement announcement i should say um that did ca- catch my eye and it was ghostbuster spirits unleashed um what's what's pretty interesting about this is that it actually directly follows the story of afterlife um, I don't know if you knew that because, like, I, I don't think you saw Afterlife, but, um... Well, no, but, I mean, I could have... Well, you're not playing as the kids, though, are you? It, it, exactly. Um, so, at the end of Afterlife, Winston says that I want to start up the franchise. Uh, like, okay. I want to start up, uh, like, um, more Ghostbusters, and we want to restart it up in New York, that kind of thing, and, um... Which, to be fair, was something that Bill Murray called out in the very first movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um... It, w- which you know that's smart writing uh, calling back to uh, you know like i think a, he said like the f- like the rights alone or the franchise rights yeah. alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams <laughs> exactly and then winston picks up on that which is which yeah is as long thing. as it's a steady paycheck i'll believe anything you say <laughs> well winston's the ri- the rich one out of ever out of everybody everybody else is a schlub at, in afterlife which is which is kind really of amazing I, I, well, I mean winston yeah. always was like the cool collected one i guess the others are too eccentric to like be like able function. to like yeah. just maintain whatever lifestyle they could have gotten i mean even in ghostbusters 2 it's been five minutes since the first ghostbusters movie and number one magically everyone forgot that ghost exists and number two they're they're reduced to like children's birthday parties yeah they're, they're basically party clowns yeah. um but uh yeah what, what what's cool about this is um 
I, I I really like the idea of this. Uh, I it, it is a like basically a, like a four player um, multiplayer game where you go into um, a house uh, or a location and you you bust ghosts together in the same way that you would in the movie. Like you you you, you both have to uh, you know you, you have to have several people like latch onto one of the big enemies with yeah, a proton yeah. wand. You have to find them. Um, that, this is something I was going to mention, is that, like, I'm not into four-player stuff at all, but, like, this is, perfect. this is the true Ghostbusters experience. Like, because yeah. in all the other Ghostbusters games, you can swap among the Ghostbusters if you're lucky, but you're you're one guy. But Ghostbusters has always been about the various people not really kind of working together, attempting to work together. <laughs> so that's that's pretty good. Yeah, and um, if, if I'm not mistaken, it sounds like Dan Aykroyd uh, did lend his voice um, uh, to... Um, he's he's basically, you know, the, the stentor there. He, he, he gives you the, um, like, the the uh the lore on on the the different types of enemies and stuff like that uh, as which which would. makes sense yeah, yeah. exactly yeah because ray um was the the occult guy and he eventually had like a cult bookshop so like exactly. yeah if, if anyone's gonna because i mean the, the other guys i mean they, they fought ghosts they're the ghostbusters but like what do they care it's thing capture thing like ray's the only one who would really care about what these things are and where they came from yeah and it, and it also sounds like um ernie hudson is lending his voice as well so um it, uh, i i you know it, good luck on getting bill murray uh to uh <laughs> bill uh, murray i don't know like he, this, he did but... the ps3 game but of course that was like 10 years ago so eh. well no he, he participated in afterlife he he, he was a, he was a sport but um... well he well he participated in afterlife because like I mean, they, like, they really want to bring him in for, like, the movies, and he's just like, all right, I'll do the movies. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, this this looks like a lot of fun. I mean, you're, you're, you're playing no-name, you're playing yourself or an avatar of yourself, so. Um... Yeah, which, again, I kind of appreciate, because, number one, playing as the OG Ghostbusters would undercut the whole thing with Afterlife, and number two, like, it's kind of, like, you're probably more responsible than the actual Ghostbusters, yeah. So it's kind of amusing. Like, I mean, that was the whole thing in the PS3 game is they were they were just a bunch of schmucks and you're the new guy. Like, that's that's like, that's about right. <laughs> you're 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 holding them up, um, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny. But um, it it looks great. I mean, uh, I'm sure it will have all kinds of references to the cartoon show because the cartoon show of of course has a lot more ghosts in it than the movies ever did, um, and um, they um, so it looks like to be like a lot of fun and uh, i can't wait to see it come out i might not play it but uh, i'll I'll watch other people play it and it it just looks like um the perfect thing for this thing so um moving on from that uh kirby in the forgotten land is out uh so uh general impressions are that it's uh great and charming but easy uh that is every kirby game almost ever um, yeah kirby games are generally easy to beat but difficult to get the the true final boss <laughs> yeah so um most kirby games ever since maybe kirby 2 um that sounds right uh, uh kirby's adventure um have had some kind of like hidden thing that you need to collect in order to get uh the true boss and usually the true boss is very difficult or, or a yeah. lot more difficult um and um it was a whole uh, different gameplay mechanic in a few of the games yeah yeah and they usually tend to be some kind of um uh like the implication is that they are some kind of eldritch horror uh that yeah like it's a lot darker than you um might think it's amazing because that's not some sort of easter egg like there's a fucked up boss in this one it's like in most kirby games like you just don't see the the dark underbelly i like the only kirby game i've ever played through because it was the only one i ever owned was kirby 64 Mm -hmm. and i didn't know about the recurring theme and i was not prepared for how creepy that boss and his theme were yeah where like it's it's this little like smiley face thing which is kirby (laughs) But then it's not a smiley face. The mouth was like 
like a, like the line of the closed eye and then it just opens an eye it's got like one eye you're like what yeah <laughs> like, this is creepy it, 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 it tends to be like something like that's almost uh like lovecraftian um in nature well in like... this in this case it was like borderline real depiction of a bible angel yeah where it's got like it's like oh oh like I, have you ever seen like the when, when people attempt to portray like what biblical angels probably actually look like because they're fucked up <laughs> Yeah, they, they 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 tend to be like um. It's like, like an eye like... surrounded by rings, and you're like, what? So like, because yeah. like, there's that one famous line in the Bible, like, "Be not afraid," and it's like, well, why would I be? I've seen all these Renaissance pictures, but no, angels are fucking eldritch horrors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're otherworldly beings that you could barely process. Yeah. Um, so so, um, what? Uh, I I've been really enjoying it. I played like the first three or four levels. Um, it's set up very similarly and plays very similarly to uh like mario 3d world um it okay. kind of just has that feel of like it feels like a 2d level but it has 3d mechanics i i, I don't know how like it it has platforms like a 2d game but it doesn't have an outstretched 3d world it just kind of has a um has 3d platforming Okay. In, in, involved like on a smaller scale like 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 2d platforming would like um, like maybe maybe mario 3d worlds like when you go into the pipe and you have to do like one of the little bonus rooms it's like a, a tiny room but it's 3d yeah well no it, it's more like 3d world in in, in its entirety um so okay, okay. kind of like that but it, it, it's not like mario odyssey where you have like gigantic oh um, okay okay um, yeah it's, it's more intimate it has the it exactly. has the old school feel but it's a new game exactly um, and I, I've been really enjoying it because like the music is very, um, heartwarming and a lot of fun. And, uh, also just the, the fact that they brought uh, in all of these like, um, fun, uh, like transformations from like, uh, you know, uh, human, um, apparatuses, uh, like, like, uh, like the cone is in particular is really funny. I know the car is pretty pretty popular because oh it's, yeah where they it's stretched goofy. out his face over this like an entire car <laughs> giant f- fuck off car but uh i was actually uh, more impressed by the vending machine um because you know, like, you know what this makes me think of like this meme kind of thing you could do it, it makes me think of when mario odyssey was just about to come out or just started coming out and everybody was like, um, you can put your cap on a fucking T-Rex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it just makes me think of that. It, it, it's very similar. And um, and good on them for, like, latching on to the fact that, you know, this is something that people think is fun and, and would enjoy. Uh, the, the vending machine is really funny because you're just, like, kind of clunking around as a vending machine and, and shooting I, shooting out cans of soda. I, I, was, I was literally just about to ask that. Are you, like, just attacking somebody by shooting out cans like it's um yeah th- this is a weird reference to make but maximum overdrive <laughs> where yeah, you just and... kill a guy who just doesn't move three feet to the side he just stands there and gets <laughs> beamed in the head like 10 times of the can <laughs> yeah no you you attack enemies with sodas um it, it, it's just it, it's it's a delight i mean there's a lot of side things to do in the game uh there are uh challenges and things like that and Kirby tends to have stuff like that, but it, it, this is just, like, a really well-put-together, charming uh, Nintendo game. Don't, like, like it's it's just a fun experience. Uh, so, uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, like, like, like everybody's been saying, you know, it's not, uh, you could probably beat it pretty, pretty darn easily, but... Um, it's it's about like uh there's there's a lot of challenges and stuff that you could do that will uh, occupy your time and Um, some of the later stuff in kirby gets tougher anyway it's not like the games for babies the entire way through or anything like that like kirby gets tough but of course beating it and then getting the the creepy end but i i'm very curious as to what the eldritch horror boss is going to be in a game like this (laughs) Well, especially because of the implications, right? Because um, the um, the Forgotten Land is very clearly Earth. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it seems to be completely uh, over over um, overgrown, uh, and like all the humans are missing. Um, so the boss um, is going to be like a a dust covered Sega Genesis. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's kind of funny because like everything's overgrown, but it doesn't look like it's destroyed. Um, like it doesn't look like 
like you know like an explosion happened or something like that. It just well, no, looks it like looks like it looks like the Last of Us or near where people just yeah. haven't been maintaining that shit or not near uh, near automata. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it's pretty interesting in that way, um, um, and it, this is of course probably um, um, sp- springboarded off of an idea from. Um, from uh kirby 64 where there was a planet that was heavily implied to be a um like a a, a an ice age a new ice age earth um, yeah shiver star when you yeah. can look at all the planets shiver star clearly has the outlines of earth's continents and when you go there yeah it's frozen over again there's been a second ice age or something and, and the only it's overrun with robots i was just gonna say yeah, the only enemies there are like like little ch- like children's toy looking like wind up robots and you're like ooh <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um um I don't know whether this has any like uh lore um like uh connection with that in particular but uh it is something that people did notice about Kirby 64 that um you know they've been talking about on YouTube channels and stuff like that you know it's it's kind of one of those darker Nintendo yeah secret things. things you didn't know like how um this is this is another one of my favorites is splatoon is yeah. like a post-apocalyptic japan probably the rest of the world but you're in tokyo because you got the tokyo tower so humans mm-hmm. have just evolved into like squid and octopus beings why it doesn't really matter but it's just like what happened <laughs> not only that but they're like um their form is is it seems like it's informed by like uh the the squid enemies from like Mario. <laughs> so like uh, Oh, the, like, oh like, when they the go eyes. into squid form. I never I never thought about that, but that's a good point. Yeah, it's like it's like almost like they became the dom- dominant life uh life form uh, oh my somehow. God. Well, it also makes me think of that one I I think it might have been Mario 3 like on NES when you can go onto the one level that's shaped like a ship mm-hmm. and like the only enemies there are the the dry bones just yeah like, there's a bunch of like, like everything died dead koopa you're like uh <laughs> <laughs> like uh it implies that it was a ship uh, it was an airship that you sunk uh from um like mario 3 um well that this was still mario 3 some yeah maybe uh, earlier in the game or something or some other i don't know who knows what but yeah like koopas died and same thing in um in the original pokemon when you um when you encounter your rival in Lavender Town, Lavender Town yeah. and he's standing over a grave and then he fights you and you notice that his Raticate is not in his party anymore and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> well Pokemon is known for its dark side so like it, 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 I I wouldn't necessarily ca- count that um that that fan theory out because like there's, oh there's, no, I'm not surprised. I mean, this this in... is the same game where when Pokemon. you fight the ghosts, they explicitly say that they like want your blood. <laughs> that's not that's not a reference. It's just like, give me your blood, <laughs> and then you have to fight them, and you're like, oh. But uh, yeah, uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, an awfully charming, uh, wonderful game. Um, moving on from that, uh, this was a very surprising game when this was announced a while ago. Um, but it's finally out for twenty dollars. But Andrew Dunas two. Um, do you know anything about this title or? No, I've never heard it? of this. Um, so the original Andrew Dunas is a um, is a sh- uh, kind of obscure two D shmup on the Neo Geo. Um, Neo Neo Geo. Wow. Um, oh, like uh, Cyberlip. <laughs> well, the, that that's a. Uh, that that's a run and gun game but this is a, like a 2d shmup um oh okay so, damn so the, the neo geo isn't uh wasn't too uh heavily populated with shmups there are a few really good ones but um it's ma- ma- mainly a fighting game system and, yeah and, yeah and most people know that and and other like versus type games um uh, there there are a few uh, like good to decent like really and a, only a couple really great shmups on on the system uh, or, or or on the format, but um, this was like an okay game. Like it wasn't like um, it's not one that like even the collectors are like all about. And uh, apparently, like somebody wanted to make a sequel, um, and which is like pretty <laughs> funny when you think about it. Like somebody wants to make a sequel to a game that like barely anybody remembers. Um, was it was it within the company or like no, is this it, game so long dead that some guy just made the sequel? 
I, I think it was one of those deals where, you know, like, uh, they could get the rights to it pretty easily. Well, I, that's what I was going yeah. to ask. Like, when, when Data East started selling all of its properties, I remember, like, on the Game Grumps, Aaron was talking about, like, man, I wish I could buy the rights to Atomic Runner so I could yeah. just make a game and whatever the hell it turns out being that would be officially canonically like atomic runner 2 <laughs> well um i i really like atomic runner it's actually kind of funny that the matches uh he he you know he's he's brought that up but i i am sure he like specifically likes it um yeah he does yeah um but i really like the genesis one in particular uh the genesis version of atomic runner is like really good it's even better than the arcade if you ask me but um the but anyway going back to this one um apparently this game is like uh, really fun and, and uh, um pretty pretty great uh it is a pixel art game so um it is, it looks really nice um it ha really has a nice old school look and it looks almost as if it could be played on a uh neo geo um i i don't i didn't see anything um graphics wise that would um be difficult for a neo geo to pull off uh so um, it seems like the general um, opinion of this one is pretty positive. It is very new. It just came out on Thursday, so um, uh, maybe the shmup, uh, the big shmup heads, haven't gotten a chance to like really play with it. Um, unfortunately, just like with um, with uh, fighting games and and um, sh like shmups at high level play, um, like. It it, it remains to be seen whether it, it, it is a game worth um, putting your time into because uh, high level play uh, doesn't reveal itself until you've played it for a long time. Um, and um, it, it's just one of those things. Like if, if you want to chase a high score and you want like a really great challenge um, and uh, a really w rewarding experience that isn't bullshit uh, with mechanics that are really complex, um, just like with a fighting game, you need to play it for a little while. So, it, you know, the 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 general consensus right now is that, that people like it. Um, but I, I, I don't know about it, um, you know, in, in, in on the high end yet. Um, I believe there is a um, physical edition um, uh, going to be put out by a... Um, I, I don't know what the name of the company is. It was like NYC games is like a very kind of strange smaller outlet but um i i think maybe play asia might be uh helping out with that as well but we'll, we'll check it out um once we get there uh oh also you you wanted to talk here about guilty gear yeah this was pretty interesting guilty gear had a reveal for a new um uh carrot well new but uh testament is back remember testament isn't it like one of the boss characters? Yeah, te um, I don't know how it worked in some of the later games, but Testament was, I believe, the the second to last boss. I don't think they were even playable in PS One Guilty Gear. So um, Testament is super edge lord, you know, like pretty white, like the color white skin, wearing like a black. Um, I, it's not a cloak, but a robe, I guess, wielding like a scythe with a red blade it's like all right okay kick-ass theme music though as always because everybody in guilty gear has a kick-ass theme whatever character it may be but this is interesting because i i think somebody can correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think we've seen testament since the ps2 so we get the yeah the, probably the not since x and core plus I think. Yeah, yeah yeah so like we have for the first time like the zard the strive look for testament but what's also interesting is the nature of the trailer. This I thought was very interesting. Testament got a whole new look. Because um, Testament was like edgelord looking guy in the previous games. But now Testament looks like very female, like cute girl, but still wearing the same clothes and wielding the scythe. Hmm. And what's also interesting is that apparently Testament is canonically a they. And... Part of this I have not looked up myself, but the other part I have, I heard that in the Japanese version, Testament has like a high feminine sounding voice, which honestly they, they did on PS1, that that checks out, but the um, the in the US version, Testament is actually voiced by a trans woman and it has this like sexy deep voice, 
Like, <laughs> and what was an interesting twist is that in in character reveal trailers for Guilty Gear, they showcase the moves and everything, and have like the rock and tune playing over it, probably the character theme. But this one was different because the entire trailer had testaments talking over it about how uh, they've changed and they used to be an edge lord, but now they've calmed down considerably. And it's funny to me because they still look and fight like a fucking edge lord, which is funny. <laughs> but like they, but like it's it's weird hearing a character like this saying something like. Well, now it is time for tea, milk and sugar for you. And like, what? <laughs> oh, okay, so it's it's pretty rad. <laughs> I like that. But That's it cool. makes me think of um, Dragon Ball. I guess just Dragon Ball, and and Hunter Hunter. In that, not so much Japanese American differences. In this case, it is Japanese and not well, not American Western differences. But in Dragon Ball and Hunter Hunter. They've had anime and manga differences. Like you remember Yamcha's cat friend Poir. Poir? Yeah. I was gonna like it's not quite a cat, but it is, I guess. But uh, like Poir kind of sounds like a girl in the anime, but I think came off a little more masculine in the manga. And in Hunter Hunter and the Chimera Ant arc, one of the king's henchmen, uh, Neferpito, was also like kind of ambiguous. I think coming off a little bit more feminine in mm. the manga and a little more masculine in the anime, wearing like those schoolboy like short shorts, you know, like ACDC. Sure, sure. So this is this isn't anime versus manga. It's fucking Guilty Gear, but like Japan <laughs> versus uh whatever Western country. Like Testament's voices are very different, which plays into the the they aspect very cleverly. So that's pretty cool. That is cool. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I mean, uh, I I I've always loved Guilty Gear, kind of, uh, you know, from from arm's length. Um, I I always really liked um, it during the PS2 era. Yeah, um, I want to see Mr. Ryu play this game. Yeah, Guilty Gear is fucking nuts. <laughs> I, I love it. Yeah. Uh, and you had something about yeah. KOF here. I did. I did add one thing. I almost forgot to bring this up. KOF has a free DLC. Omega Rugal, baby. <laughs> Omega Rugal's back. You get to see Rugal's utter bullshit with that scissor kick. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Diamond Kata! And uh, that move where he grabs you and like runs and slams you into the side of the TV screen. And then runs <laughs> to the other side and slams you to that. It's fucking infuriating. Uh, we- and they added like a boss challenge mode where... I forgot what the trailer said. It was something like face the ultimate nightmare. Or like a- SNK must be aware of how bullshit its own bosses are so it's like you want you want to try this here you go so it's free dlc so omega rugel baby rugel's back remember rugel the first boss of kof back in the 90s he's back (laughs) yeah i I remember fighting him in one of the game one of the earlier games on the saturn and um uh i I remember that i i i I spent hours trying to beat him um yeah snk bosses are no joke (laughs) and i i found out that the only like feasible way to beat some SNK bosses cheese the AI is to only attack them with light attacks and yeah. not in a combo <laughs> and pre- preferably to counter their attacks or else they can counter you cuz the, exactly. uh, the cause, so I like mean any, people people can compl- yeah, I was, I was going to say, people complain about this in some games, but in SNK games, I think it is literally true, where the AI just reads your movements and insta-responds. Yeah, um, like, you, you, you'll throw out something that, like, um, is extremely well-timed, and it, it, they'll just fucking block you. And what's um, also really fun is, I, I don't know if SNK does this particular thing, I know Capcom has before, but when a character will suddenly bust out a move that is literally physical impossible... Yeah. Uh, for, for a human to do. Like, you know, Bison's Psycho Crusher, you gotta hold back for a little bit and then press forward. But then when the AI is fighting you, they'll, they'll just do it. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, and <laughs> you, you, yeah, you brought we, this I got, up. I got, I I got some this. miserable news about the <laughs> Cowabunga collection, for the Ninja Turtles Cowabunga collection. Uh, I joked about this before. I wasn't really expecting it, but... Ah, it's a bummer just hearing it. Uh, there will, in fact, we have actual confirmation from Konami, there will not be a Pizza Hut coupon in the package. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. And I'm I'm very sure that any Pizza Hut um, branding will be edited out of the game. Um, uh, yeah, that's... Sure. 
that's a very minor concession, but it probably is going to happen. It's like uh, you know, like when they re-released Duke Nukem 3D, the uh, the red crosses on the med kits were changed to pills or something. Because like, and, oh wait, technically that's a symbol we're not supposed to use, even though it's universally well, it's because it's universally recognized. <laughs> It's one of those things. It's just like, oh, like if you're mad about that in terms of preservation, I don't. Yeah, whatever, I, dude. I, yeah, exactly. It, that's a minor concession, um, and an understandable one, especially considering like you're getting the rest of everything, like the, including the music and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, it, it seems like they they really did work out the music rights. Um, so uh, that that is uh, incredible because like part part of what makes those games so good is the music. So, um. Uh, it, it may you may not think about it in, until like somebody points it out, but like um, especially like Turtles in Time, it has one of the best Super NES soundtracks. Like um, it's it's yeah. like the top ten for me. Um, might even be even higher than that. Um, especially that um, the train level. The train level in da, particular. Da, da. Hey, da, yeah, da, da. that 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 one in particular is like one of the um like. If you had to point to like, um, what an uh, like what SNES like a, a, an example of SNES music, at like at its very best, it's that and like the the, the, the boss theme. Well, yeah, the boss theme and uh, 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 and, and the opera scene. Um, you know, from um, Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, the opera is unbelievable. Um, but like, well, uh, well, I mean, also the final boss theme of Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. It's something like completely stupid it's like 16 minutes <laughs> yeah was it hopping mad or dancing mad dancing mad yeah it's yeah. like it's it, it's like it's it's more opera than the actual opera song like i was gonna say space opera but that's not really it, true it's, but it's like it's, it's, it's like this rock. epic it's prog rock um, yeah it's like reminiscent of like the phases of like the inferno going to like the parody so you're like how what for, for final fantasy like, yeah. jesus uh and and act razor and and so like yeah yeah y- y- you have the final fantasy games uh you have chrono trigger you have act razor and chrono and, trigger and, is a marvel and and uh tmnt uh like as as like the best music and that's not even touching like you know zelda and other stuff that that's like clearly in the same same league but um yeah it, this it's it's amazing what they're doing with this Cowabunga collection. I, I this is something that like I never expected to get. Um, like just and as comprehensive as it is, uh, I never would have. If if we were to get something, I never thought I would get it like this. Yeah, I never I never thought we would get the Game Boy games, and I never thought we would get. I was I was debating even SNES tournament fighters, but I really did not picture Genesis and NES tournament fighters. In every fucking version, um, and, and along with um, like unredacted um, arcade and uh, like console versions of, of, of those games. You, you um, know what we need, by the way, is unredacted Ninja Gaiden <laughs> arcade game with the Iron Man. It's in like, there. Uh, you, it's it's on Switch. You can get it. <laughs> With the Iron Man ripoff? Yeah. It's like the da na 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 Really? Yeah. Because that was like, that's like two notes off from the real thing. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, it's it's so close that like, like even I'm like, nah, I would have cut this. <laughs> uh, there, 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 there's a lot of examples from that from back then. Um, like Rainbow Islands, the sequel to Bubble Bobble. Um, uh very it, it is one note away from somewhere over the rainbow um, oh geez it's very okay. fucking on the nose um, okay yeah um and you know it, it it obviously is it because it's about rainbows um, well but... yeah it's on the nose yeah <laughs> but uh anyway moving on from that um so apparently um p- part of what's being worked on for the uh, playstation core for the mr project um, the FPGA uh, project uh, that um, is kind of like um, one, one of the best things going on right now in terms of like um, uh, old school pre- preservation, but they're um, adding to PlayStation the PlayStation Core, which isn't even done yet, um, w- uh, like genuine widescreen support, um, which is something that like I never expected. So, um, what, what, one of the great things about, um, th- these FPGA projects is that they not only are trying to preserve things, but they're also, like, doing things like, that the, um, 
the system could never do in the first place. Um, so, uh, for instance, um, this this would work probably best with something like a, a racing game where um, uh, you could you could have a wider field of view, um, you know, in, in Gran Turismo or something like that, in order sure. to see the 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 road better, um, or or you know something like. Um, um, you know, Ridge Racer. Obviously, this isn't going to be a good thing for every game because you know, um, there, uh, there's, there's probably hidden stuff off towards the side that you're not supposed to see. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, the games this... were designed for four by three. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you, you know what it makes me think of actually is when you when you watch a VHS tape on an HD TV and mm-hmm. you see the little rainbow colors on the the very top and bottom. Oh, sure. Those would have been cropped out otherwise yeah exactly i don't know if Uh, cropped out's the right word to use but yeah yeah. no you're right you're right um this is this is the same kind of thing now um with some games like like particularly like racing games and um other like like space flight games and things like that any game where there's there's like a big open wide 3d environment this is going to work well in uh 2d games maybe not so much um it, it, it's kind of like um, your mileage may vary. Also, you know, like I, I, I don't. I I think it's a really cool feature, but I would probably prefer to play it like it was originally intended, um, because you know that's that's just it. But like, yeah, uh, I, I I might fool around with it if I were trying to play a little bit of Ridge Racer or something like that. But um, I just think it's really neat that they're they're. It, this isn't just like stretching um the the graphics or anything like that this is like doing something that the playstation just didn't wasn't designed for um and and doing something cool with it um oh and yeah you brought this one up to me this is pretty great i i laughed really hard when i saw this Um, yeah this is something that it's it's regarding bloodborne psx this is something that was teased like a year ago when they were first working on it it was portrayed as an april fool's joke but then the real joke was that they were doing it for real which was bloodborne carts because <laughs> just old school ps1 games so you're stupidly racing like with carts but what's really funny is you should look up the the teaser the announcements announced. trailer yeah yeah there's an akira reference in there they, they just scream bloodborne card like, it, it's hysterical <laughs> especially for a game that is so morose and stoic um that oh like... no but no like but e- even that like that there's other stuff in bloodborne psx that's like stupid 90s bullshit uh <laughs> i didn't i didn't figure out how to access it i guess i could look it up but like you can go into like the developer's room you know like that yeah. that was a thing that a lot of 90s games did meet the devs like that's that's hysterical. <laughs> I think the Chrono Trigger was like the first time I, I ever saw something. Yeah, like Chrono that. Trigger did it. Um, I think Pokemon Yellow might have had it because that's where you get your certificate. Um, th- this is a funny thing to bring up, but Mission Impossible on the N64 and PS1 did really? that. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I beat the game a bunch of times back in the day. I know, I know that game's like a meme, but like I liked it fine back then. I don't know what I would think of it now, but yeah, you get to talk to the devs. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And um, if you try fighting them, they will one hit KO you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can or possibly two hits. Like you cannot take a hit from these guys. Wow. Wow. Um oh, and you, you had a little thing about the Halo TV series that you wanted to bring. Yeah, up. the Halo TV yeah. series is out. Uh from what I've read, I I saw one person online who hated it, but people generally seem to think it's okay. Uh, but, it's getting uh, decent reviews. Yeah. yeah, like but apparently the people who made the uh the show did not like play the games and they like they were upfront about that so they're they're doing their own thing with it so if you've played the games you might be bothered by the changes but apparently it's an okay show although one thing i heard that really weirded me out i i knew there was going to be a face reveal of master chief because you just you have to it's you a show. can't resist that yeah even though the video games have resisted it for 20 fucking I, years. I, I mean, it's like Judge Dredd. Like, yeah, they, 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 they reveal it's, you know, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah. Carl, Carl Urban did the right thing. Yeah, um, But look, the funny thing is, in The Mandalorian, before you even knew there was a season two, like, I don't know if we're going to do a second season. So, at the time, his face was revealed in the last episode of the show. Like, but in, in Halo, apparently his face reveal is in episode one. Well, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Um, unfortunately, like um, having a, having a show where you have star power um, at all. Like Pedro Pascal is like a a pretty um, 
from the Mandalorian is a prominent actor. So, like, he's never going to agree to never show his face. Um, yeah, like, but he was a sport about it for the whole first season. Yeah. Like, it was, it was like a last-minute thing, which is, like, considering it was star power, that's a pretty cool thing to do. So they, they basically have to write in, like, reasons to show his face uh, later on in, in the show um, because, like, it has to become more and more commonplace so you can have a, you know, connection. Well, with n- well not only that, but one, once you have the reveal you've had it yeah. so you know what go go ahead show his face all the time i don't care but exactly. like but they they really showed restraint for the first season of mandalorian but halo episode one <laughs> fuck it <laughs> all right hey, who cares <laughs> uh, well, it's fine oh yeah and you, you had something uh a couple yeah of i things. actually have the rest of the stuff here yeah, yeah. so one piece uh my my update is a very disappointing one we are still not showing new episodes it is now four weeks it has been a month without a new episode and what's also really driving me crazy is that apparently something insane happened in the manga recently and the anime is 30 to 40 episodes behind because um like the the numbers don't line up i can easily say oh it's exactly 30 episodes behind because it's 1014 versus 1044 but that's not true because the anime has had little side episodes and things like that so it's as, if, as far as one-to-one being with the manga, it's more than 30 episodes behind, which means it's over half a year behind. And apparently something absolutely fucking insane happened in the most recent manga chapter of One Piece. I mean, every so often I'll see somebody on my social media feed, oh my god, the latest episode of whatever, or the latest chapter of whatever, but apparently the latest One Piece chapter is like an internet sensation, and that, like, doesn't happen. Yeah. So, so like... And considering how far we are into the series, I, man, I do not know what this is. Like, what could this be? Did, did somebody die? Like, One Piece has started allowing deaths a couple hundred episodes ago. Like, I, uh, mm. Maybe they found it all in One Piece. Uh, yeah, oh, there it is. They found the One Piece before beating Blackbeard. Oh, okay, I guess we'll just retire. I don't know. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm satisfied. <laughs> Well, the, um, the, the second half of One Piece is like Afro Samurai, where Luffy's number one and everyone's coming after him. <laughs> <laughs> this took a I, weird turn. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, I, I dug out all my uh, my my old manga from my my parents' place, so uh, uh, I have uh, up to uh, um, uh, One Piece Volume Six. So uh, <laughs> you're uh, almost there. I'm almost there. <laughs> you're almost up to manga chapter one thousand forty four. <laughs> it, it, it's really funny. Uh, I I have uh, I have uh, just like looking at my um my, my shelf just like one piece one through six uh helsing one and two just one and two <laughs> well the good news with helsing is there's only 10 volumes there's only 10 volumes yeah and then attack on titan uh, one through four <laughs> attack on titan is getting fucking nuts that series is almost over yeah. i know the manga's been over but like people have been quiet i'm very pleased about that mm. the anime just like like it's still constantly stressful to watch yeah, and for I, different I, I reasons to... every time you're just like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, the, the the problem is like, um, I've been trying to distract myself because like I the the world events have been like um like affecting me. Well, um, don't fucking watch Attack on Titan. Then. Yeah, exactly. So I I, I was like, ah, maybe I could watch Attack on Titan, and I was like, no, this is fucking like a fucking yeah, the entire show. the entire show is people have PTSD. Like everybody has those dark rings around their eyes, like at all times. <laughs> yeah, because they're they're they can't sleep, and they're all like you know fucked up. And um, even when they have slept, like they they look like shit constantly because <laughs> the Titans exist. Yeah, yeah, very stressful. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and, and another update that's pretty crazy is Ruby is getting a, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if it's a spinoff or just a side series or an alternate series or what, but it's called Ice Queendom, which means uh, I'm assuming it's going to focus on Vice, the Bold? the Ice Qu- well, <laughs> W-E-I-S as Vice, <laughs> Vice, uh, um. the the almost literal Ice Queen. She's got ice powers and she's she's not the oldest sister but she's uh, a descendant of a, a ludicrously wealthy family um but this is being made in japan and it's done traditional anime style because ruby's always been uh smooth cg but this will be done as like like cartoon style like anime like oh I don't okay. know if it, hand-drawn style yeah yeah well i don't, I don't know if it'll be hand no, it we, won't be hand-drawn, but yeah but yeah, it's gonna have the hand-drawn look 
So it, it'll be a very different aesthetic, uh, seeing how these characters animation, move. I guess is what and what, what also about. amuses me, he, he's not the director, so it's not what I thought it was going to be. He's the animation planner. But Gan Urobuchi, uh, there's a chance you might recognize this guy's name, but this guy has made uh, he uh, various other world games and shows. He did um, Madoka Magica. He did Sayano Uta. He okay. did Kamen Rider Gaim. Point is, he does weird, creepy, fucked up shit. So I was like, this guy's doing Ruby, but no, he's, he's the animation planner. He's not the director. But I was like, still cool. oh, <laughs> for a second. Uh, I, I know absolutely nothing about Ruby. Um, like, wh- wh- where do I even get started with that? I, it, it's, it's an internet web series you can watch on Rooster Teeth. Oh, okay. There, right. there you go. Or well, I, I, um, I don't, I don't know if they moved it to YouTube. I think it's just on Rooster Teeth. But it's it's a web show. There, that that's that's the long and short of it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, watch it whenever you want. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need Hulu or whatever. It's just on the website. Cool. And then, uh, lastly, some some bummer news. R.I.P. Stephen Wilhite. Uh, I don't know if people necessarily know this guy's name, but I guarantee that they know what this guy has created. He is the creator of the graphics interchange format, and because it's in his memory. I'm gonna be a bro, and today I will call it a GIF. Yeah, he's 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 uh, asserted that it it is a GIF. It is, um, it is not a GIF; it is a GIF. Everybody says GIF, but today I'll call it GIF. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that that's a shame that he passed away. Um, he I I didn't believe he was very old. Um, he, he was um, what maybe in his uh, early sixties. If that. that that's my guess because yeah. a few days ago somebody posted like this is the after uh, the the anniversary of the first ever GIF and it, it's it's quaint seeing the first one because it's it's so basic it actually looks like a slideshow of pictures mm-hmm. it, it's like a plane and it's supposed to be moving through the sky so the sky is shifting behind it it's this basic little thing and yeah, look at it, what it's become today very few frames per second kind of thing um, yeah it was yeah. like i mean the whole thing looked like it was like five frames it's just the basic idea is that it's a picture that moves somehow mm-hmm. or not well not even somehow but somewhat yeah it's like there, there's movement in this book. image can you believe it yeah so like it's amazing how how far we've come it, it it's a flip book just like um it is it just, is just like, like any 1987 movie really is. it's just a bunch of bunch of single pictures um played in succession so also by the way to put things into perspective we ourselves are one year older than the existence of the gif oh Think really about that 1987 wow hmm. we are older than moving internet pictures <laughs> i don't know about video but moving internet pictures <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah think about that <laughs> that's crazy. There, there, there are certain things where it's like we existed before common thing but like that that feels a little weird yeah, especially considering that that, that that was well before Web, web 2.0, which is the internet as we know it. Um, oh, yeah. It, well, it, it's fun talking to, uh, like, uh, the, the kids I work with at, like, at the university and stuff like that. Like, we had to log on to the internet, and it took, like, 30 seconds every time. <laughs> and not only that, but, like, you couldn't use the phone, <laughs> like, at the same time. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it sounds out. like you're, it sounds like you're fucking with them. Like, hang up the phone. I need to use the internet. Like, what? <laughs> Yep. How are those related? Well, they you connected with your phone line. <laughs> if you were maybe in a rich household, you might have had two phone lines, so you could do both. But some people would say, like, get off the internet. I need to make a phone call. It's it's so wild. Oh yeah, there there were times when I was like on it for too long, and my like parents met, missed like important phone calls because of, of you know me yeah. on the internet. You know, yeah, like, I, I remember it being, or like I left it on by accident. Um, like, and you like, weren't even googling anything because Google didn't exist. Yeah, no. You were using like. What were you using? Lycos? Uh, actually, our, our, inter- our internet provider, uh, this this is kind of like a quaint thing when you think about it. Our internet provider was from a small town, like oh, run out no. of like a basement somewhere. Like, God it, damn. It, 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 it wasn't even like AOL or something like that. It was, it was just run out of like, you know, a, a, a small town like nearby. Um, just some guy is like, I, I technically have internet capability. Give me 50 bucks it, and I'll give it, you internet. It might not have been, like, somebody's house. It might have actually been, like, an office building, but, like... like I would assume so. It, but it, it, it was still, you know, small time. It's, it's a guy just powering the internet generator with, like, 
a bicycle. <laughs> it, it was probably you know, um, you know, a small company of maybe like ten employees. Like, sure, you know, sure, sure. Um, but but know. it is, but it is funny to like suddenly discover like oh this is an old thing that no longer exists. Like when I when I first got a smartphone, um, I like you know they they took my my SIM card from my flip phone and put it into the smartphone, <laughs> and and my SIM card was like singular wireless yeah like remember them <laughs> and like the the people at at&t were like wow look at that <laughs> i haven't <laughs> like, seen one of these in a while <laughs> this is, uh, well i i always kind of think about that because like um um i i had a friend that uh passed away during college um and um he, he was one of my best friends and mm-hmm. he uh had created a me on my wii and Oh, okay. The 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 me um that and he he patterned it after himself. That me is that same very me is on my switch right now because sure. it's it's, car- it's carried over. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I, I, I kind of love that I I have that. It's just like yeah, yeah he, he created this uh, like you know right before he passed away, and uh, I still have. Yeah, this this form this of preservation. Yeah, exactly. But but and you know what it also makes me think of though it is like when when you're moving like you're 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 going on a plane to some other country and they ask for your passport and you show them a passport from like USSR or like Czechoslovakia and they're like oh <laughs> <laughs> like your birth certificate like oh yeah huh okay Jesus or the Congo uh, like like oh my God yeah countries that don't exist anymore yeah yeah <laughs> crazy East Germany yeah <laughs> yeah but anyway um well uh, anything else to add for the good of the order no I think that's about it. Uh, well, that is the show for this week. Uh, please remember to subscribe to the Corrective Consciousness YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While there, please give us thumbs ups, likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. Uh, it uh, helps promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursday for a sister podcast, Corrective Consciousness. Uh, this week, we will be talking about God of War, the franchise. Finally, you can friend me as Vice the Bold on pretty much anything. And you can follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can hit me up on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, or getting in conversations with me and other patrons on Discord, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon account, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. Wonderful. Well, we will catch everyone uh, on Thursday, then. Until next time, everyone. Still sticking those landings. We'll catch everybody later.